Velo. It's a pretty cool word. It's also a full stack development environment that is brought to you by Wix and works inside of EditorX. We're going to be having a look at exactly how to use it in EditorX in today's video. This will include things like creating a dropdown and having on-click handlers and even maybe creating some custom HTML and CSS. Let's just get started. So this is the Velo website. And when we take a closer look at it, we'll find out that it is essentially JavaScript. There are two parts for it. We can use it on the front end as well as the back end. And you can integrate libraries such as, for example, Char.js and others, or you can actually build your own using the framework provided to you here by Wix, which is pretty cool. Now this framework, which we'll be testing out, will have this thing sort of like jQuery, where you have a dollar sign W and you can pull in different content from your page and create methods using onclick handlers, for example, and even set values such as whether an item is hidden or collapse and then change those states. So we'll take a closer look at it very shortly. But essentially what I want to do is create a button with a few events or maybe even a drop down. And then later on, I want to play around with customization as well to see what else we can get it to do. Here's the website we created in the last video. If this is the very first time you're going to be using Velo, first we need to unlock it by enabling dev mode, which can be located here in the header. Simply select up here and turn on dev mode. When you turn it on, two things will happen. We'll get the left hand side menu here, which we have a lot of our developer tools. And here at the bottom, we'll get a mini code editor where we can expand this out and have different tabs for different pages. Let's explore the left hand menu here where we have a lot of our dev tools. Here we select page with code. Now this is sort of like having different bits of code per a different page. All of this code changes, and if you want code that goes across all the pages, what you'll need to do is edit the master page.js, which applies to all pages. Of course, we can head to the public as well as the backend code. This is sort of like front end and backend code. And here we can add our own files or modules or even install Velo packages. We'll take a closer look at this maybe in the future, but for the time being, let's have a look at what else we have here. We also can search our code, which we can do as well as create databases and have some additional dev tools. But realistically, I want to start here on the home page and explore the code editor that we get here as part of Velo. This code editor is pretty strong because it can do a number of things that autocomplete that you can't traditionally do with just a traditional code editor like VS Code. This is essentially JavaScript, as you can see here but it looks a little bit like jQuery and functions with a kind of autocomplete that you might not be used to. So it's good to do the documentation to get a better idea of how it works. But let's have a closer look. So when you select an item, such as this container over here, we get this menu here that pops up on the right hand side. It's automatically detected the actual container itself, as well as the ID of the component, its default values, as well as its events handlers. From here, you can create code that basically does different interactions based on these. And you can see that in our previous video, we did just that we created an on click handler here. The function for this on click handler was called the hero button underscore click. And we can actually select that and view it right over here. This is a pretty simple function. And all it's doing is using the Wix location library to go to hash, which basically is just nowhere. But that's okay, it gives you a brief idea of how this works. What I want to do is have a look at this function over here. It's dollar sign W, W is sort of like the window object. And it's checking if the page is ready, which means that it's loaded. What I want to do is show you how the dollar sign W function works. Let's actually plug it in and you can see immediately we get some autocompletes. Now what this is doing is taking a look at every type of container and object on the page so we can autocomplete it and use it as part of a function or a feature or anything like that. And if we fill in this section here, we can type in hero and I believe we should immediately get an example of the code uh, autocomplete working. So here I can see hero button has popped up with the hashtag. And this is referencing the same button that we created earlier. But now we can apply our own functionality. 
So here I've got the option of hide. If I call this as a method, this should simply hide this button for us when the page loads. So let's try that out. I'm going to select preview here. And when I preview, I can see that our button that was previously here has now, well, disappeared. So this is an example of how it functions. And you might be used to this again if you've used jQuery. Now, there are other things that you can perform. There's a whole list of commands here, and you can go through and test them out or check out the documentation. But realistically, it's up to you to decide how you want to do this. What I want to do is create a small drop down box that appears when we select this button. So I'm going to remove this old function here with this on click handler. And instead, I'm going to cause it to work when we perform a click here inside of Velo. So instead of creating this function that we did previously, I'm going to select here to create an on click handler. So I'm going to select to simply click this button here. When I select to click it, it creates a automatic function name for us. I'm going to hit enter for that. And we can see we have a very similar function with a similar name to what we had before. But now it's empty and we can start configuring it. The way I want this to work is I want it to show a container. And I don't have a container just yet. So I'm going to create a quick one just over here. I'll select to just maybe place this container right below this button. And on top of that, I'm going to change the color of this container just so that it stands out for this example. And this here will be our drop down. So let's actually pass in some text here and call it drop down as well so that we know drop down menu. Now, that doesn't look absolutely amazing, but it's just here to give us an example of what we're working with. Now, when we select this box over here, the first thing I want to do is change its ID so we identify it a lot better. I'm going to call this a drop down menu and hit enter on that. And now we can see that the container has a new hashtag here, and this is called drop down menu. We can see it's in here as well. Now, what I want to do is change the default value of this container to be hidden. Now, I'm going to select that property and then I'm going to preview it. And we can see that the opacity has changed here to 50%. This means it's invisible. And if we were to select preview, I believe it should not even be visible, which it isn't. That's perfect. Now, what I want us to do is have a look at this button here. I want this menu, this drop down menu to pop up when we click this button. So here is where I'm going to use the dollar sign. And in brackets, I'm going to call the drop down menu. And let's make sure that we have a hash here when we call it and hit enter. We've got the autocomplete completing there. And this time, instead of hiding, I want it to show. So I'll call the show method and that's it. So let's hit preview now and see if this works. So here's our button. I'm going to click it and we can see that our drop down menu has shown. But if I continue cl to click it or hover away, nothing is particularly happening. And this is where we start to need to add more configuration in for this to work properly. So what I'm going to do is create an if script. Now I'm going to set if and I'll pass in this dollar sign W and we're going to check if the actual element here is hidden or not. Now, if it's hidden, I'm going to get it to show the drop down menu. This is a basic if script, so we need an else as well. So if else, then I want it to hide. Pretty simple. Let's now run this piece of code and see how it works. So here we have our button. We select to click it and the drop down menu pops up and we click it one more time and it disappears. Success. Now, these are just some of the fundamentals that Velo can do, but it can do a lot more. In future videos, we might check at doing custom CSS or inner HTML components with custom components as well. But if you want to check that out, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.